In this video, we're going to discuss how to do Hess's law when we have to multiply or divide the equations. So this is similar to Hess's law before. We have to modify these different reactions in order to create our target reaction. However, some of our reactions are going to have too much or too little of a material. Conveniently, if you just have twice as much of everything, you get twice as much energy. If you have half as much of everything in your reaction, you get half as much energy. We can scale these reactions up. You may multiply them or divide them however much you need to to create the target amount you're looking for. You'll just have to do the same change to the energy. So how are we going to go about this one? Well, we have a lot of chemical reactions in this case. So where to begin? First step for a Hess law. Identify a chemical in our target reaction that shows up in only one of our available reactions. And so let's look and let's say HCl. I can go and look and I can say, well, here's some HCl. Does it show up anywhere else? No. None of our other reactions involve HCl. So when I change everything and sum my reactions together, reaction A is the source of all of my HCl. It can't come from anywhere else. It can't be balanced or canceled. All of it must come from reaction A. Well, I want it over on the other side. Reaction A has it on the right, I want it on the left. So at minimum, I have to flip A around. But A also comes with two of it. I only want one. So what I need to do is I need to rewrite A as a flipped, which I'll do a negative, and it needs to be half as big. I need to rewrite A as well, half of the right side, now on the left, so one HCl plus a half Na2O. We'll have our arrow, and then we'll have what used to be the left side, now on the right. 2 divided by 2, so 1 NaCl plus a half water. I've modified reaction A so that it will give me the HCl amount I want on the correct side. As a result, I'm going to have a delta H that is negative one half of whatever that delta H originally was. If it had been positive 100, it would now be negative 50. We don't know what those delta H's are, we just know the changes we have to make to them. If we were given the delta H's, we'd be able to sum them up and find it. Let's continue down the line. I've solved for my HCl. Next chemical. And A is done. Any further modification of A is going to result in changing the amount of HCl, so I can't use A again. And I've figured out my HCl at the moment. So looking at my other three chemicals. Well, what about sodium chloride? I can go and find, okay, it was in A, but we've done that. Doesn't show up anywhere else. Hey, sodium chloride must also already be accounted for. And we notice that, yeah, I have one of it over on the right. So sodium chloride is already dealt with. So we only have to solve for the other two components at this point. Well, if that's the case, I can look at HNO2. If we go and we look through, I can find HNO2 down here on D, and I don't see it anywhere else. So all of our HNO2 must come from reaction D. Well, similar to before, the chemical we want is on the wrong side. We want nitrous acid to be on the right but I have two of it on the left in equation D. So I need to flip it, and I need to cut it in half. So again, minus one half of this reaction. 
What that will give us as we flip it around is we will have a half of N2O plus a half of O2 plus a half of water going to just one HNO2. I've created a modified D that will produce the HNO2 on the side that we want. Similarly, its enthalpy will change. It will be flipped, so negative one-half of whatever delta H4 was. Well, at the moment, we've accounted for the HCl, the sodium chloride, and now the nitrous acid. The last one here is I need to account sodium nitrite. Where do we find sodium nitrite? Well, there's only one source of sodium nitrite. It's from equation B. I want, same as before, I have too much, and it's on the wrong side. So I need to make the same changes. Minus one half B will flip it around and give us a single NaNO2 over on the left. It's going to give us half NO on the right, half NO2 on the right, and half Na2O over on the right. And similarly, it would be minus one half delta H2. Well, it looks like all of our chemicals are dealt with. If we added these up right now, I would get HCl, one half Na2O, one half N2O, one half O2, one half water, NaNO2. All that would be on the left. I'd have my arrow. On the right, NaCl, one half water, HNO2, and one half NO, one half NO2, and one half Na2O. Well, there's some things that are on both sides. Na2O, I have a half on each side, so they can cancel out. Water. I have a half on each side, so they can cancel out. And, huh, that's it. If we clear those out, try and shrink our equations a little bit, what we find is we still have stuff that we're not supposed to have. I've still got these N2Os and oxygens. I've still got these NOs and NO2s. We did not succeed at creating the reaction we want. I have extra things still. Well, that's why we had a fourth equation. What is it we want to get rid of? Well, I don't want my N2Os. I don't want the oxygen. I didn't want the NO or the NO2. So there's four things I need to get rid of, and guess what four things are in reaction C? Reaction C gives us an NO over on the left, and we have a half NO on the right at the moment. I want to get rid of that half NO, so I need half of reaction C. I don't have to flip it this time, though. Things are in the correct spots. I just need one half of C here. That'll give us a half NO plus a half NO2, going to one half N2O and one half O2. 
It's going to give us a half of delta H3, but not negative. We didn't have to flip it. If I add these together, what I can find is the half NO will cancel, the half NO2 will cancel, the half N2O will cancel, and the half dioxygen will cancel. At the end, these will balance out to give us HCl plus NaNO2 goes to NaCl plus HNO2. which was our original target reaction. What is our delta H then? The delta H of this reaction is going to be equal to negative one-half of delta H1 plus negative one-half of delta H2 plus one-half of delta H3 plus negative one-half of delta H4. We merely have to do the same changes to the enthalpies of each of those reactions as we did to the reaction. So if you have a Hess law where the reactions that you can find have the wrong number of the chemicals you desire, you can correct the number to the correct amount by simply taking half or doubling or making a third or quadrupling, whatever the necessary change is, you can scale the reactions to the correct size. As long as you then do the exact same changes, flipping, scaling by half or double or whatever changes you make to the energies.